they start asking if Trump would take a cognitive test um, and whether he would step aside if he felt as president when he gets to be in his 80s that he's not as sharp as he was before. Would you consider stepping down if you felt that your health was declining? Or would oh, you, absolutely. And who would make, I think I'd know. How would you make that decision? I think I'd know. Look, if I came onto a stage like this and I got treated so rudely as this woman treated me. Oh, my goodness. Me, <laughs> and I'm fine with it because she, it does it. She was very rude, sir. Very rude. That was a nasty, that wasn't a question. She no, didn't ask me a question. question. She gave a statement. That wasn't a question. I, I repeated your statement, sir, question. actually. You, you, you said you would. You would oh, make absolutely. That if I thought down. that I was failing in some way, I want people to be sharp. I'll go a step further. I want anybody running for president to take an aptitude test, to take a cognitive test. I think that uh, let's take one. I said, Joe and I will go and take a cognitive test. Now, I'd do it with her, too. I would do it with her also. You know what? She failed her law exam. She didn't pass her law exam, so maybe she well, wouldn't pass the cognitive oh, test. Mr. President, are you saying she wouldn't have had? Just to I'm, be clear, I'm you, just giving you the fact. To be clear, you don't think <laughs> she didn't pass her bar exam, and she didn't think she would pass it, and she didn't think she was going to ever pass it, and I don't know what happened. Maybe she passed it. I she guess did she pass. Would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was awesome. That was just great. It's completely awesome. <laughs> your, your mileage is probably going to vary, but I thought that was freaking awesome. No, I didn't, I didn't mind that, actually. <laughs> I, was to, I was totally okay with that answer in every way. I didn't yeah. mind it. I did, I did get a little cringed out um, when he was asked about J.D. Vance because I felt like his answer should have just been unequivocally yes to the question, is he ready to take over your presidency if need be? The answer should have been yes, and instead he... He minimized the role, which I understand because we all know that VPs take a huge backseat, obviously, to the president and that their role is kind of squishy. But for him to say that when asked if J.D. was ready, I thought was not the right way. Vance, to answer. Is he ready on, J on day one? Does he what? Ready on day one, if he has to be. I've always had great respect for him uh, and for the other candidates, too. But I will say this. Uh, and I think this is well documented. Historically, the vice president, in terms of the election, does not have any impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, virtually no impact. You have two or three days where there's a lot of commotion as to who, like you're having it on the Democrat side, who it's going to be. And then that dies down, and it's all about the presidential pick. Uh, virtually never has it mattered. Maybe Lyndon Johnson mattered for different reasons than what we're talking about, not for vote reasons, but for political reasons, other political reasons. But. Uh, historically, the choice of a vice president makes no difference. You're voting for the president, and you can have a vice president who's outstanding in every way, and I think J.D. is. I think that all of them would have been. But, but you're not voting that way. You're voting for the president. You're voting for me. If you like me, I'm going to win. If you don't like me, I'm not going to win. I'm gonna I'm <laughs> just, just say yes. Please. You know, I, I of hear you. Of course he's ready. <laughs> I, yeah, I hear you. He, he should have said, of course he's ready. But I mean, he does have a point about the, I mean, what do VPs really do? Uh, well, and especially in the election, like, I don't know how he's right about it not impacting yeah. the election. But the, the question wasn't about the election. It was about, can he do the job day one? Right. And his should have been, of course, that's why I chose him. Done. I there didn't I, need to be all that stuff in there. I would have been like, what do you know? Is something going to happen to me? <laughs> do you know something i don't know what is something yes, that would have been so somebody awesome. gonna shoot me again you know something <laughs> if you go to mypillow.com slash chicks and use code chicks huge 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 sales right now still during their 25 dollar extravaganza thon and look what we discovered today so cool they have smooth toe compression socks in every possible length you guys, the no shows, the low cuts, the quarter cuts, the knee highs, they've got them all. So if you like that feeling of having your leggies or your feetsies squeezed, I like the squeeziness. I'm who all about like that. that. I'm well, some people don't, but I am all about the squeeziness. So you guys, compression socks are life, especially if you have to fly. It's just always a good yes. idea to wear them. I like yeah. how they have the no show ones. I know all about that. And they're so cheap. 
Like right yeah. now they're on such huge sale. And again, when you use promo code chicks, mypillow.com slash chicks, you're going to get these amazing deals on all of the socks. Yeah. So why would you not? The why would you not awesome. want to do that? Support Mike Lindell. Seriously, yeah. do it. Use code mm -hmm. chicks, mypillow.com slash chicks. Do it today. Um, this was a great moment. This next one where Trump got an opportunity to talk about how his he has been the victim of a weaponized justice system. I've been prosecuted because I'm a political opponent of two people that have weaponized our justice system. Uh, I've been prosecuted. I just won the big case in Florida. Everyone said that was the biggest case. That was the most difficult case. Uh, and I just won it. Now, Biden has a similar case, except much worse. I was protected under the Presidential Records Act. Biden wasn't because he wasn't president at the time. And he had 50 years worth of documents. And they ruled that he was incompetent and therefore he shouldn't stand trial. And I said, isn't that something? He's incompetent and he can't stand trial. And yet he can be president. Isn't that yeah. nice? Yeah, Mr. President. But I they released him on the basis that he was incompetent. <laughs> they said he had no memory and he was a nice old guy, but he had no memory. And so, therefore, we're not going to prosecute him. Uh, I won the case and it got very little publicity. I didn't notice ABC doing any publicity on it, George. <laughs> you you it it up, I'd love to move over on to I different I didn't notice topics. you do yeah. any publicity on. on it at all. I won the case, the biggest case. Uh, this was this is an attack on a political opponent. I have another one where sir, I have a hostile mind, judge. Move, we have you for a limited this, time, uh, sir. I'd favorite. love to move on to different no, topics. Excuse you, you're can. the one that she held loved me to up move for 35 on. minutes. Just, my message. I love it. She's like, I'd love to move on to a different topic because I'm I'm really drowning here. I'm drowning <laughs> in my own filth. I'm drowning. I got to move on. Right? For the love of God, please let us move on. <laughs> Um, okay. So that was great. That was a great moment from him. Mm -hmm. See, like all the people that are like, you just are so quick to bash him. If you actually listen to this whole show, <laughs> you'll listen. see that I'm very fair. I tell the positive and I also tell the negative. Listen, she's on the train. She's on the train. Okay. Oh, God, She's having cocktails with me on, on the Trump train. Oh, just I'm having all the cocktails. Everybody, she, she is. Okay. She just, it takes her a while for me to get her completely <laughs> smashed. Okay. <laughs> Just give me time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So then this next moment was when um, he's a little inartful. I'll say that um, because he refers to black jobs. And so they immediately are like, oh, my God, what does that mean? You're so racist. Right. But um, and he's not particularly adept at answering that direct accusation, but he makes it through. Here it is. Which is to stop people from invading our country that are taking, frankly, a lot of problems with it. But one of the big problems, and a lot of the journalists in this room I know and I have great respect for, a lot of the journalists in this room are black. I will tell you that coming, <laughs> coming from the border are millions and millions of people that happen to be taking black jobs. You had the best. What exactly is a black job, sir? A black job is anybody that has a job. That's what it is, anybody that has a job. All right. And Mr. they're, taking, President, they're taking the employment away from black people. They're coming in and they're coming in. They're invading. It's an invasion of millions of people, probably 15, 16, 17 million people. I uh, it's what is a black job? A person that has a job who is black. <laughs> what? I mean, that's what he tried to say. Um, I, and I get his point. Like, I think anybody with common sense understands what he's saying, that illegal immigrants are taking jobs away from black people. I'm yeah. speaking to a group of black people specifically. So you should care about that because it's affecting all of you. You know what I mean? As black people. Listen, but this, I think it's the way he termed it that like everybody just pounced. You okay. know what I, mean? I just listen. I don't. And this is a broader problem. Like what's in it for these people? if Kamala becomes president and we become like a freaking socialist utopia, you know, in their brains, like it's just, everything is going to become exponentially worse. Right. And it, like inflation is going to become worse. Our economy is just going to go in the complete shitter. Everything that you, it, that you're experiencing right now. And I assume some of these journalists, they're not loaded, right? I mean, they're like you and me, they live normal lives where they have to go to the grocery store. They have to put gas in their car. They have to do all the things. They live normal lives. They don't live like George Clooney. Okay. So 
what's in it for them to keep perpetuating this? I don't get it. I don't understand. Like the people who get their marching orders and they, they have to keep this stuff up. What, how is socialism, how is a Kamala presidency going to make their lives better? I don't get it. What's in it for them?